All right, you have your Bibles this morning. Please turn to the 119th Psalm, Psalm 119. I decided not to read the whole chapter. <laughs> no, we're just going to be looking at the first eight verses. Psalm 119, verse number one. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we are thankful to be in the house of the Lord this morning, Lord. And I thank you so much for the precious word of God that is so encouraging and Father directs our lives, Lord, and the Holy Spirit that helps us, Lord, each day, uh, Father God, to live as we should live, and that is by your precious word. So, Father, we, we thank you for each and every person here this morning, each and every family. I pray, dear Lord, that your will would be accomplished in our hearts and in our lives, and Lord, that souls might be saved, and that, Lord, we as Christians would be brought closer to you. Father God, just bless this day, and wherever your word is preached, we pray that, Lord, that souls will be saved. We praise you, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. As I think just about everybody knows, Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. And I used to say that every verse contained some reference to the word of God, but I found out that to be different in my readings of late. Uh, there are just a few that does not have a reference to the word of God. Uh, but we see these words, like in verse 1 of our text, the law of the Lord. Uh, verse 2, blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Verse 3, in his ways. Verse 4, precepts. Verse 5, statues. Verse 6, commandments. And, and on and on we could go. Uh, but I believe this 119th Psalm shows you and I just how important the Word of God is to our living that there is not one portion of our living, that there is not a teaching or a principle of the Word of God that we can, we can apply it to our living. Now let's look at uh, verse number one. It says, blessed. Everybody wants to be blessed, I believe. Every believer has a desire to be living in the fullest blessings of God. So we want to be blessed. It says, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the, way, in the law of the Lord. And, and what a great thing to be blessed of God. Uh, blessings are God's gift to us. Uh, by the way, blessings are not deserved. It's by the grace of God and uh, out of his gracious heart. James 1.17 tells us that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variables, neither shadow of turning. So who is it that is blessed? Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Those without blemish, those without spot, those that are living right in life. Well, guess what? That just left you and me out, didn't it? But we always have hope in Jesus. Always. We can do all things through Christ, even live right. And the psalmist shows, shares some way here with us that we can live right our life in such a way that we can be blessed. First, to be blessed, just kind of take it for granted here. It's, it's you know, we live our life uh, by the word of God to be blessed. As it says here in verse 2, blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Our, our Bible is the instruction book for us to live this life uh, and, and to be able to live a life that honors our God. And bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ, the cause of Christ. Uh, but you know what? It's so very easy to not live by God's word. That's why we have most people not living by God's word. 
because it takes a effort. It takes a dedication to live by the word of God. Most people today, they want to live by their ways. They don't want to live by God's ways because it takes effort. Where are people today that just want to do things the easy way. God never said his ways were easy. But he did tell us that there's nothing impossible with him and that we can do all things through our Lord Jesus Christ. So to live by the teachings of God means we have to submit ourselves to God, to God's word, to be fully focused upon God. To have God's blessings. So we have to be focused on his word. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. So what is our desire? Do we have a desire to live by the word of God? To apply his teachings to our everyday living. What's our attitude towards the Bible? Whatever your attitude is towards this word of God. Has everything to do with how well you're going to live for the Lord. Now, if you one of these people out here the, uh, that said that, oh, I, I believe just certain parts of the Bible. Well, you got a problem. Got a bad problem. My Bible tells me, and I believe with all my heart, that this is this whole entire Bible, every word, every every jot, every tittle, as Jesus said, is by the inspiration of God. It's fully truth. Nothing false whatsoever. And God does not change. The word of God that was good for those in the days of Jesus, just as good and just as applicable to you and I today. We have no excuse. But we need that desire. And one thing else the Bible tells us, our love for Jesus determines how well we Obey the Bible. Jesus said in John 14, 23, he said unto them, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Psalmist says we're to keep the testimonies of God. And you know what? We're only going to keep those as well as we love Jesus. So then we are blessed by the way we love Jesus. Because, verse 2 says, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. And Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my testimonies. You'll keep my word. Now that verse in its entirety says, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with their whole heart. Their whole heart. Everything we do for the Lord, the Lord wants us to do it wholeheartedly and sincerely, including our love for him. Mark 12, 30 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Now, if we love someone, we want to please them. We want to please them, and we have ultimate respect for them. And we will do for them before we will do for ourselves. Nobody has ever done for us what Jesus has done and never will. No one loves us like God and Jesus. God and Jesus' love is totally what we call unconditional. Now, we as human beings here on this earth, we can say we love someone, but you let something go awry or you let somebody's attitude change. You let them do something you don't like, <laughs> affects that love. Thank God that's not the way it is with God and Jesus. Now, God and Jesus don't like our sin. Doesn't like it when we disobey, no. But they love us. And that's what God tells us to do is to love the sinner but hate the sin. So no matter what we do, God loves us. And God loves us enough to chastise us, to discipline us. Because we're his child and he wants to keep us in that place where we can be blessed. Hebrews 12, 6, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. 
You know why that is? Because God loves us with his whole heart. And if we truly seek him with our whole heart, then we're blessed. Psalm number one, verse, verse, verse number one says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. You want to be blessed? Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, and don't stand in the way of sinners. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. But it says the one that's going to be blessed is going to have a delight. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So we seek God, and we do what he tells us, and we do not live as the ungodly world around us. And he says, you'll be blessed. But seek, he says, delight to live by his word. And it's something that, that wonderful blessings are ours just because we follow the word of God. Just because we do what God says to do. Now verse 3 of our text says, the person that's blessed and the person that wants to live by the testimonies of God, it says they also do no iniquity. Why? Because they walk in his ways. We avoid sin by living by the Bible. There's no room for compromise concerning our living by the word of God. And Christians, Christians that have any kind of a spiritual maturity whatsoever don't want to follow after the way of sinners. If you have any spiritual discernment, then you recognize sin, you recognize evil, you see it, and you, you avoid it. And a Christ-honoring believer is going to stay away from the wrong influences. We have to stay away from the wrong influence. We have to stay away from people that want to disobey God and live ungodly. What did it say back there in Psalm 1 1? It says, Nor standeth in the way of sinners. In other words, get, get in there with sinners and get influenced wrong. You don't do that. You don't expose yourself, you don't expose your family to people with ungodly behavior, with ungodly habits, people that do not honor the Lord Jesus Christ in their living, with their actions, with their speech. It says we are to do no iniquity. They also do no iniquity. So how do we avoid that iniquity? How do we avoid that sin? We walk in his ways. We live by thus saith the Lord. Are we perfect? <laughs> Obvious answer there is no. No. But from a heart that loves God, and loves Jesus, and wants to live to please them and live to be blessed, we're never going to plan on sinning. We sin, but we don't plan on it. Paul said about himself and us also in Romans chapter 7, verse 13, or 14, he says, For we know that the law is spiritual. The Bible is from God, so it's spiritual. But he says, I'm carnal, and we're carnal, sold under sin. And he says, for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. Notice what he said there, for that which I do, I allow not. In other words, we sometimes sin. Something that we do not allow, but we sometimes do it, Paul says, because he did, and we do. But we don't think about it. We don't say, yes, sin, just come in and have full control. <laughs> Give sin permission to just overcome us. No, we don't do that. No, but we did do that that we do not allow. In other words, we sinned and we did something that we normally we would not do and we would not maybe even think about doing. But for a short time, it overcame us. 
Well, Paul says we're still carnal. We still have the flesh. But then right away the Holy Spirit gets our attention. And we know to repent and ask for forgiveness and to live for the Lord. And then Paul said, what I hate, that do I. We should have a hatred for wrong. We should have a hatred for sin. We should have a hatred for evil. What I hate, that I do. Sometimes we really don't do what we want to do. We do what we hate, which is sin. And we all have to be aware that in this flesh, there's nothing good. Paul said in Romans 7, 18, or in seven, or Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which in Christ, who walk not after flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 7, 18 says, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. You see, we're either walking in the Spirit, under control of God, the Holy Spirit is in control, or we're walking in our flesh. Choice is ours. But the victory is ours when we, as Paul said in Romans 8, 1, when we walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So what do we do? We need the Spirit to dominate our living. How do we accomplish that? Whatever part we feed the most, whatever we give the most nourishment to, whether it's the flesh or the spirit, that's the one that's going to dominate. If we want to hang around the wrong crowd, do the wrong thing, expose ourselves to the ways of the world, and ignore God, then you're going to be living like them. But if we want to follow God's instructions, live by the word of God, and pray, and uh, reach out to others and be a good witness for the Lord, then we're going to walk in the Spirit. But again, the choice is ours. They also do no iniquity because they walk in His ways. Now verse 4 says, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. See that? Now here is a matter of obedience again. God has commanded us to keep Thy or his precepts diligently. So a blessed and a blameless life is achieved by living obedience to God's word. And when we do not live by God's word, then we cause shame and we cause disgrace and reproach to the name of Christ. Because we name the name of Christ. We're Christians. And we should be talking about the Lord and letting people know how well we are in this life because of Jesus. And so we have to be careful. We have to be diligent. We have to have a mindset to keep his word, you see. When we mess up, and we all do, We give our critics opportunity to accuse us. And boy, we've got enough of that going on out in the world today. And while we're on that subject, you know what? When a servant of the Lord messes up, the world, the world does a good job of letting it be known and tearing them up and trying to bring disgrace to God and the cause of Christ. Don't carry it on. Drop it. Get over it. If you messed up and everybody in the world knew about it, would you want everybody else talking about it? Not unless you're a nut. And there's just some things that it's not worth talking about. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. We don't keep his precepts diligently. That's when we fail. But diligently. See that word diligently? That means with a great continued effort. 
just keeping on, keeping on, as we say. Giving total focus upon living by God's word and avoiding all the other wrong influences. What did Jesus tell us in Matthew 5, 16? He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine. Jesus is the light. We are lights. We reflect Jesus. The, the, the Bible depicts sin as darkness. And so this world right now is enveloped in darkness. The world is dark, but Jesus is light, and we have light. And our light shines as we live for Jesus and as we shun sin and we make a great, diligent effort to stay away from sin and the influence of sin. And I got news for you. There's some out there, there's some of the people out there that's living in darkness. They want to see some light. They want to know there's some hope. At one time we were all in darkness. Boy, wasn't it, wasn't it so sweet? You caught a little glimmer of light. Caught a little glimmer of Jesus. And all that Jesus had to offer us. I believe with all my heart there's a lot of people out there this morning walking around in darkness and they, they're looking for some light. They st they've got that hope in their heart. And they need us to shine our light. And the more influence and the better we live for Jesus and the brighter our light. The more people are going to be able to see in that darkness and get out of that darkness. So, so much more the reason for us as believers to avoid darkness. The more influence we can have for the Lord, the better it is for the lives of the people that are walking around in the darkness. And we must not follow after the ways of those that's walking around in darkness. We don't have to, we don't, we don't want to be and do the things that the lost of this world are doing. We're to obey what it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Separate yourselves from them, saith the Lord. Oh, you don't, you don't shun them and never go around them and, and never try to have a good influence on them. That's, why God's not, that's not what God's teaching us. He's saying, don't put yourself out there into the middle of it so much that you get influenced wrongly. And we've seen that happen. And it may have happened to some of us. Come out from among them, be separate, Touch not the unclean thing. Don't dabble in the ways of the world. Don't let it have an influence. And God says, and I will receive you. Don't take up their habits. Don't take up their ways. Don't take up their fads. God's word distinctly says, be different than they are. Because that's their hope. They're in the darkness, and they look to the light, and they see some light, and they want to see something different. They want to see something that's going to give them more hope. So we need to let that light shine very bright. And if we desire to be blessed of the Lord, we have to be consistent in our obedience to the Word of God. We need to have the desire that the psalmist has. To keep the word of God. In verse 5 he says, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. That my ways were directive, directed. When you're allowing someone to direct you, that means that you give them authoritative control. They have authority to control you. So what is controlling us? Oh, that my ways were directed, controlled with authority by the statutes, by the word of God, is what the psalmist's desire is. So we have to ask ourselves, who or what are we allowing to have authority in the way we live? 
the way we think, the way we act, the way we talk. To whom do we listen? We all know there's good influences out there, there's bad influences. And we choose whom we want to be around. The people that live ungodly and they have wrong habits, they have bad habits. And I'll guarantee you right now, you hang around with people with bad habits, you're going to get some bad habits. You hang around people with good habits, you're going to get some good habits. That's why God says, hang around Christians. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And allow the word of God to direct our living. The word of God is directing our living. We're setting a good example for others. And they'll be influenced by it. Verse 6 says, when he's lived by the word of God, he's, he's applied all the testimonies of the word of God. He says, then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will not be ashamed. For a true believer, when we mess up and we do something against the commands of God, we feel conviction. And we should feel shame. We know we messed up. We know we displeased our Lord. And let me tell you what, feeling conviction and shame is a good thing. Because it tells you, you need a change. You need to change this in your life. So you won't feel that shame and you won't feel that conviction. And here again, you might have to change company. You might have to get away from the wrong influence. So that you can be consistent. And not be ashamed. And have great respect under the word of God. You revere it highly. Not a, not a whole lot of respect going on in our world anymore. In fact, I don't know. I guess the word's still in the dictionary. I hope it is. But it just seems like to me a whole lot of people don't respect other people. Don't respect the things we should. Verse 7 says, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. When I've got the Bible into me and I'm living by the Bible, he says, I'm going to praise you because my heart's right. I have an upright heart. So we're going to praise God. And our hearts are going to be filled with satisfaction and joy when we have learned God's righteous judgments. When we've learned the word of God and we've applied it to our living. Notice how the praise is accomplished. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart, a heart right with God. Our innermost being. And when we're in that condition, guess what? We've got a heart full of joy. We've got a heart of gladness. When's the last time you had deep down joy? That your heart was so right with God that you just had to praise him. You just had to say, thank you, Jesus. Praise your Lord for being so gracious, so good. Our heart, an upright heart, is going to praise the Lord. And then in verse 8, What a wonderful statement. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. I will keep thy statements. I will obey your word. When we are steadfast and are living for the Lord, and we're enjoying the blessings of God, we have that realization just how dependent we are upon our God. And you know what? You better be dependent upon your God because your God's the one that's in control. 
I don't care what anybody says out there. Our God is in control. There's a lot of things going on. It's not God's will. But God's in control and God is orchestrating a plan. Don't ever forget that. But we need to understand that we are totally dependent upon the provisions and the blessings of our God. This psalmist, he had a great desire to live right. I will keep thy statutes. He's got that settled in his heart, in his mind. Lord, I'm going to keep your word. Therefore, he has no desire to live in a way that God's not going to be able to bless him and that he's not going to be able to feel the presence of God. Boy, the greatest, greatest thing sometimes is when we just feel his presence. And the whole world can be coming apart. There can be personal disaster or family disaster or nation disaster. And all of a sudden, God will just give you peace. And say, in spite of what it looks like, in spite of what's going on, it's going to be all right. I look for that. I want to feel it. This last week there was something going on and I told God, I said, I need a peace. I need a peace about this. God gave me a peace. Didn't have to worry about it no more. It was still there. I know God's going to handle it, and he did. So wonderful. We have to keep his word. Feel his presence. He says, oh, forsake me not utterly. Man, the worst thing that we can do is drive a wedge between us and God. We can build up a wall between, a partition between us and God by sin. And it says that we can, we can have this wall of partition, we can sin, and God won't even hear our prayers anymore. That's why it's so important to repent, confess of our sins, and keep that line of communication with God. And you know what? If, if it is our desire to live by God's word and God's, apply God's teachings to our life, What a wonderful thing. That has to be a desire so that we never experience that downtime. <laughs> because it's our desire. And guess what? <laughs> it's we that choose to slip away from God. God doesn't move. <laughs> God's steadfast. God stays in place. It's we that move. We make that choice. But when we're determined as a psalmist, I will keep thy statutes, then we're going to be blessed and we're going to feel the presence of the Lord. And again, who's blessed? Verse 1 of our text, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and they that seek him with a whole heart. Blessed are they that also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. That's the way to be blessed. And let's be truthful this morning. Are we blessed? Are we blessed? Maybe you're here this morning and you can say, well, you know what? I can't be blessed because I'm not saved. I've never, I've never called upon the name of the Lord. I've never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save my soul. The biggest and greatest blessing you're ever going to get in this lifetime is getting saved. Nothing's ever going to top that. Nothing. Again, it's our choice. We want the blessings of God. We want the blessing of salvation. God said in his word, Romans 10, 13, he says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
If you don't call upon the name of the Lord, you're not going to get saved. That's why I always tell people, you have to get saved the Bible way. You have to get saved God's way. You've got to obey the word of God in Romans chapter 10. You have to confess that you're a sinner. You have to let the Lord know that you realize that Jesus died for your sins and he was raised again on the third day to life everlasting so that we can have everlasting life. And then we believe in our hearts and we confess with our mouth. Thou shalt be saved. Most wonderful blessing there ever was. But now that we're, we that are saved, we know what the blessings of God are. And we know how wonderful it is to experience the blessings of God. Because it's innumerable. And it's in, it's. It's in so many ways. It's happenings, it's people, it's things. It's just God, you see. God's blessings. We know that. We feel them. So are we blessed? Or have we strayed? Have we allowed ourselves to be under the wrong influence? Are we slowly losing the joy of our salvation? Do we still have that peace within? We've got to be like old Joshua. And he just stood up and said, As for me and my house, he says, we're going to serve the Lord. He made a choice to be blessed. He made a choice to let his light shine. We make the same choice. As for me, I'm going to serve the Lord. As for my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You do that, you make that decision, and guess what? <laughs> You'll be blessed. Be blessed far beyond what we may ever even imagine. That's our God. Because his ways is far above our ways. And he knows what we need before we need it. And we need all those blessings. Heavenly Father, Lord God in heaven, come to you this morning thankful, Lord, that you let us know how to be blessed and to be in that place of blessing, dear Lord. Oh, what a wonderful thing, Father God. Lord God, keep us in that place of blessing. May we keep ourselves dedicated to you, Father, and to your word to keep ourselves in that place of blessing. And Lord, I pray if there's one here this morning or someone listening that have never received the blessing of salvation, that today, dear Lord, the Holy Spirit would convict them and draw them to the cross of Calvary. And, Lord, that they would, they would ask Jesus to save their soul today and let Jesus become their Lord and Savior. And, Father, for us that already know Jesus and have him as our Savior, Father God, today may we make him Lord, Lord of all. We praise you. We thank you. Because we ask it all in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Please stand.